Awesome. Well, welcome. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, shoot me a comment. Let me know you're here. Uh, I'd love to say hi if you're watching. It's Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Uh, we are a natural plant-based fitness nutrition company. But um, today we're actually going to be talking about getting back to it, getting back to uh, full exercises. I know uh, during this time, and if you're watching this live now and not watching it sometime in the future, or this is the, towards the end uh, of the lockdown for the coronavirus, and uh, a lot of people, a lot of gyms have closed. Uh, a lot of people have uh, not stopped going to gyms for, for the reason of uh, social distancing and things like this. But there's lots of other reasons that uh, we can uh, stop working out that, that may be beyond our control or even within our control, just challenges that we need to deal with and priorities like um, traveling uh, or loss of income, uh, uh, an injury, a sports injury. I know that's happened to me on several occasions where I was just not able to, it was just not smart to uh, work out when you have an injury because you could do increasingly more damage. So um, even their personal priorities, uh, uh, a birth in the family or a death in the family that may result in us um, prioritizing that is much more important and putting aside our workouts for a while. So there's lots of reasons why we can stop working out or stop with our normal exercise routine. But right now it's, it's one of those times where a lot of people are going to get back to exercise. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily going to back to the gym. I know for some of you, uh, going back to the gym is off the table for right now. And, and understandably, uh, for many of you, they're excited to get back to the gym and, and get back to uh, workouts with using weights in the gym. Now, there's reasons for that. Uh, some people have gotten home gym setups they've created, which is great. Don't have to go to the gym. You can work out right from home and stay on point. Uh, but other people who are in small apartments, who don't have a garage, who don't have the space, uh, maybe have family or other things that just don't make it really feasible, or our, our income challenge. Look, there's what over 36 million people out of work now, you know, just going out and buying gym equipment, especially with even used gym equipment, uh, the prices are going through the roof right now because of people overcharging since there's a higher demand for them. Lots of reasons going on here, but I hope you have found ways uh, to, to, to try to keep at least a little exercise like walking or biking or uh, calisthenics or yoga or some other forms of exercise to keep you in shape. But if you haven't, here's, here's a couple things um, to keep in mind when getting back to it. Um, and that can be in any way that means to you. Um, and it doesn't have to be talking uh, specifically about the coronavirus. So first off is start easy. I know in our minds we remember, hey, I was bench pressing 315 for 10 reps. It was great. It was easy. I was in the flow. I'm probably not going to do that right now. <laughs> so um, uh, I need to know that I will start a lot lighter weight and a lot fewer reps and give my body some time to adapt. Listen, going back in there and hitting the gym hard right from the get-go, if you're going back there, just for example, I'm not uh, suggesting that anybody go to the gym anytime. I'm just using it as an example. But if you go back to the gym and you hit those weights too hard, you're going to cause a whole lot of inflammation. Um, so there's some things you can do about that too as well. But don't put yourself in that situation where you think, ah, that's what I did before. I can jump right back into it and do it again. No, your body has adapted to not working out. Um, some of you have lost muscle. I know I have. Uh, some of you have, have gained body fat. Um, so these are uh, adjustments that your body makes to try to conserve energy. Muscle expends a lot of energy. As a matter of fact, just two and a half pounds of muscle over your body, the whole body, just two and a half pounds of muscle actually burns about a fat, a pound of fat per month. So that's a great way to lose weight is a strategy to add more muscle, whether you're male or female. And even at rest, your body is using energy because that muscle requires energy just to maintain. So you're that muscle tissue is constantly burning energy. It, it increases your which, uh, your uh, BMR, your basic metabolic rate. So um, don't don't rush it. Number two, don't rush it. Start easy and then don't rush it. If it starts feeling good and you want to add a little more weight, add a little more weight, give that a little time. Remember, give your body time to adjust. If you 
Thanks, Darian, uh, Darian for uh, joining me. Good to see you on here. Uh, Rebecca, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, so uh, um, the, start out slow. Don't rush it. Ease back into it. Use your brain. Don't use your emotions. Don't don't lift with your ego. Lift with your body. But know what your body has to do to recover. So one of those things, you're going to get some inflammation. You're going to get that delayed onset muscle soreness if you've been without working out for a little while, especially when you're adding weights that really challenge the muscle tissue. So focus on anti-inflammatory foods, um, especially berries, great uh, pro-inflammatory, dark greens, hit the salads, hit those berry smoothies in the morning. Um, anything that has a high amount of these three things, omega-3, polyphenols, and fiber. Those are your three big anti-inflammatory groups that can make a significant impact. Now there's other things like uh, spices and herbs, cinnamon, great, uh, turmeric, great for reducing inflammation. So there are some other things you can add even herbs to as well, uh, like ashwagandha or some of the adaptogenic herbs, great time to take those. And it's great because when you're going back to the gym or hitting get, hitting your exercises hard again, if you've been out of it for a little while, these adaptogens can help your body adapt to the changes that you're going through. Um, BCAs are great for this recovery period. Um, delayed onset so muscle soreness. And you've got to think about um, muscle turnover too. So you're going to actually be breaking down some muscle tissue. So you're going to get that muscle soreness, that DOMS or delayed on onset muscle soreness. So the more you can incorporate into your food that has, remember, those three things, omega-3, fiber, and polyphenols. Greens are great because they pretty much hit all three of those. Uh, berries, also usually uh, pretty good sources of polyphenols. Also a good source of fiber and some even good sources like acai, great source of omega-3s as well. Um, so get those berries in, get your dark greens in, and throw some nuts in there too, uh, especially uh, things like walnuts or flax seeds. Um, almonds are great. Um, what you can do is with the nuts, you can actually blend them down into a powder. If you've got like a blender or a, uh, one of the, a Nutribullet or Ninja or whatever, I blend them down to powder, add a little water at a time, and you can turn it into your own nut milk. That'll give you that source of omega 3s. It'll also provide some protein and needed fiber. Um, so it'll hit those all together at once. Um, uh, don't try to do too much at once. It may feel great. Even if you're starting out slow, it may feel great. Wow, I feel the energy. It's all coming back to me. I'm feeling my strength gains coming back on. But don't try to adopt too much at once. Remember, your body still has a lot of catch up to do. So even though it may feel good, don't say, all right, I'm going to add, you know, uh, half an hour of cardio and then I'm going to do yoga after this. Stretching is a stress on the muscle. That's like cardio or, or Pilates. Great stuff, but don't try to incorporate all of this at once. Cardio is endurance type fiber muscle stresses, your, your type one fibers. And, uh, and then of course, working out is type two fibers. So if you're stretching and, or doing a stretch style exercise, you're doing cardio workouts and doing uh, strength training, that's, that's gonna be a heavy, heavy load for you. Now, remember when you work out too, this is why it's important to ease into it, especially in this era of the coronavirus, is that a strenuous and stressful intense workout can feel great, but it actually can drop your immune system too. You don't wanna make yourself overly susceptible. Now, we know that by simply uh, in increasing your strength workouts, um, and the higher intensity, you actually increase your microbiome. And look, the microbiome or the gut is where our immune system flourishes. So short term, you have a dip in immune system. Long term exercise is actually going to strengthen your immune system. So that's why easing back into it is really important because you don't want to create so many inflammatory markers from an intense workout coming back too early, too fast and, and, and creating more inflammation than the immune system can handle and compromising that immune system. Ease into it. Let your body gradually build back up to this, and you're going to be very thankful you did, not making yourself susceptible to um, 
to illness, but also allowing your body to adjust and it can adapt so much better when it doesn't have so much on its plate to try to handle at once. So BCAs are great. Uh, obviously, omega-3s are great. Uh, ahi flour, obviously, that we make is one of the most amazing anti-inflammatories, both omega-6 and omega-3. And remember, omega-6 uh, is actually can reduce inflammation by turning into what they call resolvents. So they actually resolve the problem of inflammation. Pretty cool. And they could do that right on site. Um, uh, it's amazing that ahi flour, unlike uh, your EPA or DHA supplements from fish or even algae oil, do not have the omega-6s in it, do not have the GLA in there that can really reduce the inflammation. The GLA, the omega-6s, the um, SDA, the ALA, that's all in ahi flour. And that's why it's so amazing at, at bringing down and reducing the inflammation. But remember also, EPA is important um, and, and, and uh, eye flour is actually 400% more effective at converting to EPA than flax, chia, or hemp, which is incredible. So EPA is important because it increases muscle protein synthesis. One study showed it increases muscle protein synthesis by 25% while reducing muscle protein breakdown by 22%. So that's amazing. It's both increasing the amount of muscle your body's ability to make while decreasing the amount of, uh, of damaging destruction to the muscle tissue. And that's exactly what you want, especially during this time when you're trying to get back into that same amount of muscle tissue and an optimal fitness level that you've had before. So another change that is going to happen when you're working out is your hormone levels. When you are sedentary, your testosterone levels can drop significantly. <clears throat> and, and that's a challenge. And, and obviously, if you haven't exercised for a while, your body can be storing body fat. So a lot of people who haven't exercised, they drop the muscle tissue, and that's conservation of it energy. Since your body says, wait a minute, if you're not using that muscle, it's burning a lot of energy. Let's unplug that. Just like uh, unplugging your refrigerator if you're not going to use it for six months, right? The body starts reducing the amount of muscle because it takes a lot of energy to keep it going. And on the second thing, your body says, well, well, you know, if you're not using as much energy right now, let's go ahead and store some of that energy and, and form fat uh, in case you, you might need it later. So when you do have increased levels of fat, remember fat cells can actually create estrogen. And then you can get into an estrogen uh, dominant state and your body actually through the fat cells is actually creating more estrogen while your lack of workouts is reducing your testosterone and bringing your estrogen levels up and your testosterone levels down makes it even harder for your body to try to get into that optimal fitness state. And this is for both women and men. Um, women naturally have a higher level of estrogen, but we both have estrogen and testosterone in our bodies. They both serve a purpose. But if you can help the body readjust to optimal levels of both estrogen and, and uh, testosterone without the side effects, that can make a big difference. That's why I created Cell Block 80 and why I use it, especially during these times. I'll probably up my dosage a little bit because I'm really trying to get my body to adapt. And remember, we're talking about adaptogens like ashwagandha, which is a key ingredient in Cell Block 80, able to help you get into that uh, higher uh, testosterone and reduce that estrogen so the body fat can come down while also optimizing thyroid. Ashwagandha is clinically proven to improve thyroid health and thyroid controls your metabolism. So this can help you with getting that body fat back down to where it needs to be while also uh, making sure you don't result in excess estrogen or DHT, which can cause all the negative side effects. So number eight, <clears throat> understand you're probably gonna need to increase your protein uptake and possibly even your caloric uptake. Um, hopefully you've decreased your caloric intake because you've been a little bit more sedentary, not as active. Um, now you're gonna actually have to increase these two. Now, the reason you increase your protein uptake and it's only temporary, you don't have to go crazy on the protein, but you, it, your body is going to turn over more protein. Your workouts are gonna stress some cells to the point where they're destroyed and you actually tear them down. That means turnover, protein turnover. 
So what you need to do is actually replace it with a little bit higher uh, than normal protein. Like I may do a, do a scoop of uh, clean green protein in the morning and then post-workout, I'll probably do a scoop and a half for this period of time uh, to get that protein level up to help with that recovery and to help rebuild the protein. Remember, you've probably lost some of that uh, muscle tissue in order to gain it back. Once you're back to your optimal states, those states that you were, once you hit that weight where your body fat is low, you're lean, and you, you've got the muscle that you're that you're used to or like, and and then you're then drop down to that maintenance level of protein. You don't need as much protein when you're in maintenance level as you do when you're trying to regain some of that. So do up your protein. Don't go crazy. It's not necessary and it's not healthy to do really high amounts of protein. Now, if you're doing pure plant protein, most of the research says no matter really the amount of protein is a lot less significant in a negative health impact way than if you're eating animal proteins. And that's because of the type of amino acids that are in animal proteins opposed to um, uh, opposed to plant proteins. If you want to learn more about that, check out my video on plant proteins versus animal proteins. It's an eye opener. Um, so uh, the, the last bit of piece is to try to maintain uh, smart lift, lift smart techniques. So keep your form, don't go crazy. Remember, you may have lo lost some strength, I almost guarantee you've lost some strength, and it's okay, it will come back. You will get back to those states. As a matter of fact, giving your body a full rest for an uh, extended period of times can actually help the body really fully heal and repair. So that can be a positive thing. And I've often come off of an injury where I've had to stop working out even for a couple of months and come back and within a month been stronger than, than I've ever been before. And, and that's me at, you know, 50, 57 years of age. So it's, the recovery can be there if you're obviously eating a good diet, making sure you're getting proper nutrient levels in there. Lift smart. Don't start going crazy. Don't go too fast. Go nice and slow. As a matter of fact, the slow movement of the weights as you're doing very slow movements can actually help build up your strength quicker than by trying to do them as forced weights or forced reps. Um, so stay smart with your lifts, proper form, proper exercise, proper amounts of reps build up slowly, allow your body to adjust, and enjoy the changes. You know, this is a great time for you to do some motivation for yourself by taking a before picture. Take those before pictures, say, this is, this is what I looked like before I got to the gym, and then, and then wait, you know, get back into your exercise routine, and remember, don't rush it, get back to your exercise, let your body build up, wait till you get back there, start throwing in some cardio, and get lean again, and, and then look at yourself in a couple of months and take a new picture. This will be great motivation for you to remember. Your body remembers where you were. Your body can get you back there. And you'll trust next time. You won't stress out saying, oh, my God, I'm going to lose all my gains. All the muscles going to I'm going to gain 20 pounds of fat. Oh, my God, I'm stressing out. Ah! Don't do that. Use these before and after pictures to show you how quickly your body will adapt. Thank your body for that. Be thankful for the, you for having your health when a lot of people uh, have been suffering right now. So be thankful that you have your health and do it smart. Again, if you're going to the gym, practice uh, safe sets, sets, S-E-T-S -E of weights, uh, lift right, good form and enjoy the process. Um, watch your body adapt to this process. Listen to your body, tune into your body and, and give it what it needs. A lot, uh, a lot of high-end anti-inflammatory foods and, uh, and, and keep the uh, nutrition levels up. Thanks for joining me again. I've got some really cool breakthrough information, a brand new study on vitamin K2. Okay, so the big deal was that uh, you're going to have to tune in and find out about it. But it blows away the myth that vegans and plant people on a plant-based diet cannot get the vitamin K that they need, that they must supplement. I will show you that is wrong. It's exciting because it's going to show that actually vegans and those on a plant-based diet can actually get higher levels of K2 than those who are on a omnivore or animal-based diet. So tune in next week for that one. It's going to be a great one. I'm excited about it. We're blowing away the myths. 
You can't get B12 from, from plants, myth busted. You can't get enough protein from animals, from plants, myth busted. You can't get omega-3s uh, from, from anything but animals, myth blown out of the water. Okay, and now K2 myth busted. I can't wait to talk about this one with you next week. So I'll see you next week. Enjoy your workouts. And if you're getting back to the gyms, be safe and be healthy and know that your workouts, your exercise is keeping you healthy. Thanks and have a great evening.